All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, at the right. What would be the correct terminology? Right. We refer to our brand as Right. We're incorporated as Right Manufacturing. Right Manufacturing. Yep. They're the Right More line, correct? Yep. Because it ain't right, it's wrong. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So here we are at the Right Manufacturing, and we have the Right Robotic Standard ZK, and uh, it's driven by satellite. That's right. There's a lot of different sensors All going right. on with this machine. And we have a Mr. Ed Wright here himself. Yes, hey, Ed. I'm Ed Wright from Wright Manufacturing, CEO of Wright Wonderful. Motors. Could you uh, give me a little information about this machine? Yeah, so overall what we're doing with this is this is our ZK chassis, which we've had for many years, a very proven platform. And it has a drive-by-wire system, so the hand controls communicate to the pump via wires, and that's how you manually control it. You can drive like right here the mower. Um, your intricate areas. When you get to a bigger area, what you can do is just cut your perimeter pass. You get back to your start point, you have remote, you hit mow, and it starts cutting all the lines in the middle. It has a lot of sensors. You know, we're using GPS, we're using some cellular data that gives us uh, calibration. Uh, we've got wheel sensors, accelerometers, all these kinds of things that helps the machine understand precisely where it is at the time. And um, you can just see here things like cameras in the front, one in the back, so it has a 360 view of what's happening around the whole time. If it comes up near anything, the tree or something, it'll go around the tree. If it's an object that's on the ground, a soccer ball or something like that, the machine will shut down. So now let me ask you this, sir. Now, the lighting here is to make sure that if it gets low light, that the sensors are able to see? That lights, lighting's just for awareness. There's two different color lights in here, and when it okay. goes to robotic enabled, there's one color light, and then when the robot starts running, the other light comes on, okay. and the blinking pulses mean different things sure. to the operator. That's great. All right, and you have Vanguard power on this one? Yes, this has a Vanguard 40 horsepower engine. One great thing about this engine has electronic cover, it's very responsive, but that, this engine can communicate with the robotic system to control the engine speed and that kind of thing. So now, if, if it sees it's coming up to uh, some sort of obstacle or something like that, it'll throttle back? We try to keep the engine full speed the whole time we got blades on. So it just it But if controls. it finishes, you know, it can idle down. Sure, yeah. okay, all right. Now we gotta talk about price anytime we talk about something like this. That was coming next. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not cheap, but um, I think the ROI is there. You, especially if you've got a lot of weeks per year that you're cutting and mm -hmm. doing some larger areas, uh, a park or soccer plexes or places like that are ideal. Um, in that kind of environment, um, this is a partnership between Bright and GreenZ. So GreenZ owns and manages all the software that's in the machine. And they have a service fee of $12,000 a year that includes full support of all the computer stuff that's all going on. All the computerized that so takes care of yeah. the, the wheels. And there's a lot of directions under the hood. You know, it's connected to the internet and that okay. kind of stuff. And then uh, the space machine, we believe to be around $30,000. We're still trying to figure out where the economies of scale come into this stuff. And in an environment right now where it's hard to get computer chips, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly where we stand with that kind of thing. So we're put around $30,000, I think. So we're talking to get into it is the 30000 that right. covers the machine. Yep. $12,000 a year per subscription yep. for, um, did you say Green, Green Z? Z? Yep. Green Z? Green Z. Okay. Yep. And that gets you started the first year. Is there any possibility that Green Z may start lowering the subscriptions if the more you sell? You know, if I can look at my crystal ball and see the future, I think all of this type of technology, the price is going to come down pretty quickly as we gain scale. Okay. That's uh, well, and I would think it may, may not. But yep. And okay. Also, just I'll point out, we have back here Steve and CBQ from Green Z. Great. So we're talking this. about uh, the money you're going to save, not just in, not just in operations <laughs> and operators. Um, let's say someone doesn't show up today. So this is the, this is how you it works. You know, if you just have one robotic mower and you got to look over it, you didn't save anything. Right. You're just spending extra. The real sweet spot I found with it is having two, one person, two robotic mm -hmm. machines, and one regular machine. So what I'll do is I'll pull up on a property, I'll pull, pull the first robot out, and I'll notch off an area real quick, maybe an acre spot, half acre spot. Mm -hmm. I'll pull the other one out, another half acre spot. I'll pull the third mower out, and I'll start manually going around the edges or between the plots where I had set up. I might start prepping my third area. When the first machine finishes, I leave frog it over. So I'm running three mowers, about 80% efficiency, productivity. So one person can do around two and a half at tops, maybe three times as much work. And I think that's it's 
it would be kind of a model for a dedicated mow crew to do larger areas. Are these going to have programs at some point where each property you is going to know the property? Yeah. And that machine is going to know its cut. So one thing you get for that for $12,000 $12, a year okay. is this the computer system that's in here has a ton of capability. We're only scratching the surface of what this machine is capable of. We also want to start um, simple and solid. So you don't have to use an app. There's no screens. There's just two buttons right here you know, to, to set your map when you're mowing. You can also cancel and clear. And then there's a remote control, which you don't have to use all these buttons. You, know, you can drive it around if you want. I can do that. But the reality is you just have to use the mow button um, in order to start the machine. We have the e-stop here so you can stop it. And okay. you can toggle your speed. So like you want okay. a little bit better cut quality, the growth is heavy, you might slow down a couple notches or sure. you, you know, light might speed it up a couple notches. It's well thought out. Oh. I mean, I gotta bring up the most important part of this. What's that? And Ed is going back to the future. He's got, we're gonna call this analog fuel gauge. <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. So we've got computerization, and then we got realization here. Yeah, you know, you don't want. Any... So this is a great combination, Ed. I appreciate that. Sure thing. <laughs> All right. So it. now, wheel motors, and the drive basically is still it's maintained with your normal interchangeable parts for your other motors and correct. Okay, so, so the wheel motors on this are a regular H series, uh, 15 cubic inch wheel motors. Mm -hmm. And then if I open this up. So here we have the pumps, which are normal pumps, but there's an actuator on here. It's kind of like a windshield wiper motor type of thing. Sure. It's all sealed, right? It's part of the okay. pump. And that motor is controlling the pump displacement, but the actual hydraulics are normal parts. So it's going to operate in the rain. We're not going to have to worry about no. any yep. of that sort of thing. IP69. Yep. It's all sealed in here. Okay, good deal. Yep. And electronics are relatively easy. I mean, actually, really easily accessed. Yep. And all the adjustments. Yep. Mechanical adjustments are really just real simple to get to. We've always had an approach to trying to keep things simple because that means there's less things to break or mm -hmm. has to be fixed. It's easy to figure out what needs right. to be fixed. So you've, you've maintained maintainability. Yep. All right. So one of our philosophies, I call it modularity, mm -hmm. is, is when you have really good modularity in how you design things, then your, your failure modes and how you repair things become much, much more simple because it's a single subsystem that you're dealing with at a time. If you intermingle too much of those, and you don't have to be a large really operation in order to be able to maintain your line of mowers yeah. because everything interchanges. Yeah, there's a huge amount of part commonality. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, sir, I really appreciate you showing us this line. And if you have time, would you uh, take us through a couple of your standard mowers? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, what do you have as far as commercial line goes here? So let's first talk about new products. So last fall we came out with what we call our ZXT. It's a really large, powerful mower. It has a 40 horsepower engine with a 500 hour oil guard system on it. Okay, let me let me keep speaking. I'm gonna go ahead and okay. get some shots here. So here's the oil guard system. It's a 500 hour oil change system. And then we also, the thing about the engine is that this will get you 500 hours, but you gotta keep maintaining, checking on your filter. We added this device here, which has a fidget spinner in there. Mm -hmm. and it, so it helps your debris drop out before it gets into About your... ninety percent of what goes in that thing comes out the slot rather than going to the filter. So now our filter matches the oil guard system. Well, Mr. Wright, let me ask you this. At, at some time in the near future on your YouTube channel, would you figure out some way to demonstrate this sure. for... A lot of people are not going to know what you and I are talking about at this moment. Yeah. If they see some sort of so graphic... Works. Yes, yeah. sir. That's going to help you sell. I actually have a clear one sitting on my desk. <laughs> I don't have one on my desk. <laughs> so that would, that, you know, I don't know what the deal is, Ed, but you're going to have to so straighten that, up your sign. That would be a great demonstration show, you know, what's in I, there. I think it would, would drive customers yeah. to you. And if you have a chance, there, the company's called Engineer, and they have a booth here at, at the show. Okay. And they, you know, they've got a demonstration where you put debris in there, you can see it thrown out. Sure, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll try to get by there and attach it to this, this video. So the other thing we have here is an eight-quart hydro system. So that has a thousand-hour oil change uh, interval. Eight quarts? Yep. I mean, that beats the heck out of those cores and stuff here. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Double, double the, the flow, and, uh, not double the flow, double the basket. Yep. All right. And it, 
Man, it's got a 26 inch tires. A lot of them are sold with 72 inch decks. And then the other thing we have here. As you can see, the whole operator platform moves yeah. in the seat, but it's really not a ton of moving parts. Different companies have different setups like this. Right. We don't like it when they wobble around too much, get a little seasick. This really just gives you that vertical comfort. And it's only going to move as the more moves yep. below it. Yep. Right. Then your exactly. armrests and your handlebars move together a lot more. Well thought out. So, what right. we're now showing the show for the first time now is the baby brother to this machine. So that moves us down like two or three thousand okay. dollars. Let me do a, a 360 on yeah. this and I'll be right over there. It's not at that point of reacting to those. All right, very heavy deck. What is that, seven gauge probably? Yep. seven gauge. Seven gauge and you have a Yep. He's got one of those Maxxis Garage Mahal Class 5 hitches on the front. <laughs> this is part of the weight kit for the bagger system, but you right. can also get just the hitch. So you can also add like a sprayer system to the front of this thing and all type of accessories, and, and you have other accessories, correct? Yeah, and you could bolt this onto just about any of our mowers. I mean, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a nice just flat plate, right? So here we've got tie down, standard tie downs. Yeah. And uh, they're not. Toys. That's uh, we're talking about. Looks like nine sixteenths diameter. It's actually a bit of a joke because anytime I take a prototype home, I tell my engineers that I'm going to break it, and they're like, "We well, can't break this. We made it too strong." So these tie downs, what I kept doing is trying to change this to my truck, just pulling it out of the of the bog, you know, hitting it, jerking it, you know. And these were the ones that finally didn't bend. Oh, uh, Ed. Now my engineer over there, and some of my people keeps telling me, "Don't tell." The manufacturers you're going to take home and abuse it and break it. And here I am, I've got a manufacturer telling me they're going to break it. Your engineers got to love your ass, I can tell you right now. So anyway, uh, at least we're we're in the same boat here, so I appreciate it. Right. Yeah, so I, I do like the, the gauge on that tie down. The other thing we did here is a lot of these caster pins are the equivalent of an axle for a 3,000 pound trailer. Correct. We up a size to what would be a 7,000 pound axle. So that's a hard <laughs> so steel. You're, so you went to like an inch and a quarter, inch and three, probably inch three eighths? I think it's inch and three eighths. Yeah, we're talking you know, serious. It's two, if you look, study the stress analysis on it, it's two and a half sure. times stronger. Well, so, and, and just the metallurgy alone tells you. It's 1040 you, steel, which is real hard. Yeah, yeah, it's high carbon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, and you have something I enjoyed seeing is this uh, stand. And this is step here that's going to be... We call it the boot scraper. Yeah, and it also looks like you might have been a dirt bike rider at one time. I was. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> we got too much in common. Oh, and do I see someone that's back to the future here? Yep. So one thing, one thing that's interesting about this particular fuel gauge is this needle has a magnet in it. And the, the bobber spiral device inside there has a magnet on it. And when the magnet underneath turns, the dial on the top turns. And gasoline, this is a separate chamber than under here. In fact, see that? That has a magnet in it. So you can't get gasoline inside the lens. That's too nice. All right, now I'll put a fuel gauge on my Hustler. Uh -huh. Yeah. What are you going to do, right? Yeah, I don't have a right. But that's your fault, not mine. You have to work on that. Yeah, that's that's your fault. Um, I do like I do like this. Yeah, that really does protect that filter. That's what we want to do because when you back into stuff, this thing gets ripped off. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're, no, we're talking about removing the, Without the, the grass catcher, right? Yep. And uh, now the grass catcher was powered. I noticed. Yes. So let's show that to the people real quick. So the thing about so many baggers that has always bothered me is that as soon as you go too fast, the deck overwhelms the bagger and plugs up everything. And I wanted, with 40 horsepower, I wanted enough power to this thing, enough airflow in here, where you're gonna run into deck cut quality issues when you go too fast, long before you plug the tube. So, unless, if it's not raining, you can pretty much go full speed, your eight inch deep grass, and this won't plug. And it's got a lot of volume above and below. It has a lot of volume, and we have a really large, we can get a lot of torque to this. So a lot of these blower systems have these little tiny four inch pulleys. But like on the 72, we've got a pulley that's about that big underneath there. And this looks like it's at least two and three quarter depth yep. on your impellers. Yep. Yeah, the and height. And they're corrugated. And the diameter. Basically are yep. scalloped so that they don't plug. Yep. 
Okay, man, that looks great. And this style, it's really important to maintain the momentum of, of the grass, how it's traveling. Because you can have blowers go, go this way, but now you have to take the engine power to change the direction right. of where it's going. Exactly, and that puts drag on everything. Yep. And now I have to have to tell people that you have this drop pin. Yep. And it has a retainer, so if it does pop out, is that magnetized by any chance? No, it's not. Okay. It's just straight forwards. So it's not going to be a problem to get out in case. It, okay. Yep. But it is retained. We like things that are like. So there's no sticker to come off here. Right. right? Your numbers are cut in. It's easy to I read. I like that. It's, you see what you get. I don't like hiding how things work. You know, the dial cut systems, you kind of hide what's going on. So it's not as intuitive, especially somebody who's working with a machine mm -hmm. new. But here you can easily see this link just coming back to the pin, so you know which way things are going. And for the folks that still enjoy seeing the chain lift yep. maintain. Yep. And now explain your notch system here on the foot. So we, you don't want to have to use your hands to, to right. release the deck, right? Watch your foot there if I lower that. Oh, okay. This is latch up, that's latch down. Latch up, and, and, then, and that's just release right there. Yep. And your center foot is parking brake. Too easy. All right, and we have over here. Yeah, so this is the neck, the baby brother to the, to the ZX. Okay, and, and this model is the ZXL. ZXL. Yep. All right, and it's 37 horsepower. Is that 37 on all the ZXLs? We have a 61 and a 52. The 61 has 37 horsepower and the 52 has 28 horsepower, both Vanguard okay. engines. All right, so you're not paying for a motor you don't need? For the 52, yes. All right, okay. The 61 the 52. still comes with a ton of torque. Now, to be specific, the difference between a 37 and a 40 horsepower is not much. They both are 993cc engines. They both have very similar peak torque, which to most of us is what really matters. Because exactly. we don't care what governor it is, once you slow that bog that engine down, you're going to use your control levers to be the governor. The governor's wide open, right. whether it's electronic right. or mechanical. Well, this 37 horsepower, the biggest difference is it has a mechanical governor versus the 40, which has an e governor. So the e gov, it responds quicker, but in tall growth, this is going to deliver just about the same amount of and, torque. And let's explain torque and horsepower. Torque moves the system, horsepower comes in at the high on the big RPM on the top yep. end. And if that RPM drops, you need that torque to right. maintain. Torque is what it. matters when the thing slows down. Torque Thank is you. how much you're twisting it. You got your speed, you take torque times speed and you get power. Right. And so Back in my power racing comes days. Peak RPMs. My racing days always describe that as that torque arm. Yep. How big is your arm? Yep. Right. And if you don't have a good uh, torque curve, then the machine will die on its face when you start cutting the deep grass. If you have a real tall uh, torque curve on your lower end, mm -hmm. you can just go, 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 go. It'll go slower, but it won't ever give up. Right. Okay. That sounds good. So give me, uh, give me an idea what we're going to be getting for the money on this particular machine, and then we can talk about price between the 52 and the 61. Sure. So the, the biggest thing that we get here, the, the front is the same up to this point. Okay. The seat tray doesn't travel. All right. So we, we have, have suspension deluxe, seat still here. The deluxe suspension seat. Right. But this part doesn't move. Part of that and, is bringing the weight down. And that seat's got a really good. Feels like a really nice dense foam. Yeah, it's one of the best seats. So on you the didn't you didn't really exact cut any money seat. there. Yeah. Exact same seat. Okay. The thing I do. I don't like. So a lot of machines, you're bumping along and you kind of wiggle to the front of your seat. Right. You tilt all of your seats back about three degrees. It makes it a lot more comfortable. It does. You kind of sit in the pocket. Mm -hmm. but to do that, we have to have an adjustable back. Oh, you do have adjustable backs on it. Yep, we got an adjustable back here. The knob is over on my left side, and then the armrests are also adjustable. So, so you can change your tilt on the armrest? Yep. You get your back right, you get your armrests right, right. right where you want them. So you're ready for the day then. Hmm? And if your day changes, you can change your adjustments. Right. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. And then the transmissions on this, rather than being pump and motor system, we have the ZT4400 transmissions in here. And we go from 26 inch tires to 24 inch tires. We're going almost the same, same speed, we're going 12 and a half here, instead of 13. Um, it looks a, a little bit lighter machine, the transmissions come down one level, and that's where we get that $200,000. Right. So it's, uh, it's an integrated system, yep. a hydro gear system. So it's similar from the 2000 up to the 5400 series so that if you have any of those you know how to service this yep. particular yep. okay i can give you so, the walkthrough of the transmissions if you want i'll make i'll make hydro gear do all that right. so you don't have to sure thing. all right um and by the way i'm the only guy at the show that's brought 
hydro gear part. I put a seal on here. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, don't you? <laughs> I believe you. you know? Hey man, you, you gotta help you guys out, right? That's that's what we're here doing, trying to help you sell parts. And, all right. Um, so the difference between 52 and 61 is just strictly the deck and the horsepower. Yep. Now, are the wheel motors the same? Transmissions are the same. We do go from a wide tire to a narrower tire. On the 52. Okay. All right. And uh, that's your new lines? Yep. In, in new standards? Standards are tried and true. We didn't make any big changes this year. Okay. Thank you. Our lineup is the ZK. And right now, yeah. the labor market being really tight. We want tight. to make sure we get that in here. Yeah, I mean, you can't miss that. <laughs> Alrighty. So this machine's doing really well because when you're trying to turn time and money as quickly as possible, this is the beast to do it with. Okay. And let's see. We've gone with the Vanguard again. Yes. So this and is the uh, 37 horsepower. And this is the 72 deck. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> 72 deck. Now, does it come with the nice little flags? <laughs> it doesn't. But if you wanted Dad, one, we could probably. Well, okay. Out. I just want to make sure people, you know, knew what they were buying here. So, all right. And don't show my wife this bucket. She's gonna take it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's. An don't look at this bucket over here. He can't let you have it yet. Friday, come by here. He'll just send you home with it. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like I can't buy that. I know. I'm just we messing. I got a mess with her. We've only been married 51 and a half years. So. Oh, yeah. So this allows you to stuff trash through the hole and then it doesn't blow back up. Right. Otherwise you put this on a trailer and yeah. it's all. And you've probably seen my uh, my picker-upper mm -hmm. attachments on my more silly looking stuff. Yeah. It works. works. All right, and now I like this right here. This is not something we're gonna use in the field. This is put a little tree in. Yeah, it's a literature stand. <laughs> I guess you could do that if you're a lawn maintenance. You yeah. Could, yeah. yeah. All right, well, Ed, I really appreciate you taking the time, sir. Yeah, well, thanks and, for stopping uh, by. We, uh, we want to get these out there and let people know. Is there anything else you'd like to let the people know? Oh, I guess, well, there's a few things to mention. One is just that I'm, I'm really glad that we're back at GIE this year. Um, I understand why they canceled it last year, and I think the percentage would have been really low anyways. But uh, this year, it's really great turnout. It's good to see everybody again. This, this is really a community, this industry, and uh, it's important, this kind of event. The other thing I just want to bring up is that the supply chain side of the world is really broken right now, and I can tell you, my first person experience that um, we're cranking out mowers every day but we're not going to be going into spring as an industry with normal stockpiles and so I would encourage anybody that if they know exactly what they want or they want this engine or that deck size or whatever get it early move now because um, or if you need multiple you know if you need a bunch of machines of the same size mm -hmm. make those moves now because as spring gets closer and what we want is so many of our customers have been buying our equipment for many many years and we want them to get what they need first um, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Let's, let's say you've got a maintenance outfit that needs to buy a new fleet. Yep. And even though you have a supply chain problem, so you really can't, are you going to be able to work with them to do their fleet purchase and then deliver as they come in? With that? Yep. So we, we believe that we're going to be able to meet every, 